As we talked about ordering them and moving them around and so on, there is something right here, this little icon you see here that says background. This is what's referred to as the raster attachment planes, okay? So I'm gonna pick the one from 2006 as an example. And all of those others happen to be on, in this case, by Linger, the cursor over the top of it. These are all in the background planes, right? That's where they're all located. What I wanna do is I wanna take this particular image and change its plane. You'll see that there's three options, right? There's background, which sort of makes sense, right? It puts them all in the background. There's foreground, okay, which puts it in front of everything else that's there. And then within those three planes, background, design, and foreground, they're like three different individual groups of raster images. So things like bring to the front work within a given plane. Hopefully that makes sense. Because what we want to do with this one is say, all right, let's take that one and let's put it into the design plane. And you'll notice that it appears down here. No matter what I do with these images, let me zoom out. And if I say, let's take uh, that image right here, let's find one that's next to it, for example, maybe here. And again, what did I put into that plane? I took this one here. That one will work. And I say, all right, let's bring this one to the top. You know, we want that to be all the way at the top. So I come in and I was to say, uh, bring to the front. Okay. You look at this and you say, well, it didn't bring it to the front. It, it should have brought it to the top of that. No, because we have three different planes and these three different planes are groupings of those images. And those viewing tools only really function within that group itself. Now, this is important because when you take an image such as this one that's here, y'all notice this column right here for display priority? You're all are comfortable with that, I'm sure. That's the standard priority that you see up here. But you'll see the little dash lines that are in here, which indicate that it's a null value, but this one shows zero. And I can click on that and I can set a priority. Raster images within the design plane can be given a priority so they can mix and be intermingled with raster data, as well as other images where foreground and background don't have that available. If this was a 3D file, for example, what's gonna dictate that priority? Just like microstation data itself, it's the elevation of it itself. So let's talk for a moment about some of the images that you're gonna see here in a moment. Okay, so here are a couple of, uh, in this case, these are monochrome images. There's two colors that get defined. We wanna talk about a couple things about transparency and the priority and setting things in the design plane. So in this image that you see here, let's kind of set this up for you. First off, you see the CIT file that's here. This is this white data that goes along with it, right? This is, happens to be sitting, in this case, in the background. So the vector geometry sits on top of it. Kind of makes sense, right? Well, the other image that you have here is this ITIF. This ITIF that sits here, if we linger our cursor over, happens to be in the design plane. How can you tell that? Well, you see the priority is set right here you also notice that the geometry sits underneath it. So there's a couple things you should know. One, you can set the transparency of an image, and I just turned it on there, so you can kind of see it start to appear, right? And there under transparency, we can define the background color to be 100% transparent, and we turn transparency on. And then we have a quick option right here to turn that back on and off. So there's our vector data sitting over the top of it. If I zoom in a little bit so you all can see it, if you take a look at this vector data, you'll see over here on the left side, it is over the top of my raster. On the right side, it is underneath it. That's because it's set, in this case, to the design uh, plane 
which maybe I want. So I'll set this now to something underneath it. We know this is at zero. So let's just say, let's set that to be negative 100. Notice what happens to it, right? Now, the raster data goes behind the vector geometry. Now, that's not to say that you can't intermingle data with what you see here. If I draw a line, in this case, at negative 50, and I'm going to make it go across the vector data here, as well as the two types of raster, we'll see that here we're above it completely, right? That's completely above all of that geometry, with the exception of it's underneath the other vector data that was at zero. So the priorities that you see here affect, obviously, our DGN data, but it also affects the raster data based on what design plane it's set to. And one last thing, we might want to make this match. Every one of these images, we can make changes to. So for example, I like the fact the white geometry, this is yellow, pretty hard on the eyes. I might select it and say, let's make that white. Let's not just set the images you know, to be the same color, but they're kind of stark. They should be dropped out a little bit. I can go to the transparency, and where the background is set, I might say, let's drop the foreground to be 75% on both of those. So same thing, we'll go to transparency, and let's drop this out to, doesn't have to be exact, but 77 is close enough. You'll see now they start to kind of melt into the background, so to speak, as far as the look and so on. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.